We are so excited about the film. I hope you are too. As you heard, it's going to premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival, and then it's going to be rolling out to audiences globally this summer. And I am incredibly honored to be included in the film. As you heard, I live in West Virginia. I'm the mother of an 11th generation West Virginia daughter. And I had grown up in Appalachia. And I started doing this work to protect the Appalachian Mountains from a devastating form of coal mining, which you saw briefly in the film, called mountaintop removal. But I didn't grow up beside a coal mine. I didn't grow up beside a coal-fired power plant. I grew up in a beautiful little resort town in the Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee called Gatlinburg. And this winter, in the midst of an unprecedented drought that scientists said was made worse by climate change, a wildfire ripped through Gatlinburg. Dozens of, over a dozen people lost their lives. Thousands of homes and businesses were destroyed, and the local economy in my hometown may never recover. It was a moment when it felt for me that coal pollution, which is the biggest contributor to climate change, had landed on my doorstep. And the one thing I have realized since then is the same thing is true for every single person in this room, for every single person out there listening. It's just a matter of time, whether it's a wildfire or a superstorm or political instability or rising seas. So for me, the work that we are doing in the Beyond Coal campaign has taken on a much greater sense of urgency. As you heard, since 2010, we have secured the retirement of almost half of the coal-fired power plants in the United States. And we have been instrumental in ushering in the clean energy, wind and solar revolution. And you may hear on the news that it's competition from other energy sources that is driving this shift. And that is part of the story. But the other part of the story is a remarkable, incredibly sophisticated grassroots network, a grassroots network that is active everywhere decisions are being made about how we make electricity in America, which is not Washington, D.C., though you may think it is, but in fact, it's in cities and it's in states. It's venues like utility commissions, state legislatures, city councils. And in that grassroots network, many of the leaders are women, because it's women it's incredible. It's incredible work. Because it is women who are often on the front lines of family emergencies that are tied to coal pollution, like a child who is struck down with an asthma attack, or water that is polluted with mercury and arsenic and lead coming out of the tap. It is women like Kim Wasserman, who is a Chicago mother of a child with asthma, who successfully led a campaign to retire a coal plant in her neighborhood that was so old, Thomas Edison had signed the guest book. It's women like Kathleen Sebelius, who's the former uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services and was the governor of Kansas, where she denied permission for new coal plants to be built in her state because she knew it was the wrong direction for our country's energy future. And uh, it's people like Judy Bonds, one of my mentors from the West Virginia coal fields, who asked the simple question, if coal is so good for Appalachia, why are we so poor? If this network keeps pushing as hard as it can over the next four years, it alone can get us 60% of the way 
towards meeting the Paris Climate Agreement and save thousands of lives in the process. And that will happen despite the headwinds coming from Washington, D.C. So we need the help of every single person in this room, in any institution where you have influence. Help us make this push away from coal towards clean energy. And when you do, you will be joining the ranks of thousands of women from all around this country and the world whose names may not make it into the history books, who sometimes are risking everything in their leadership, but on whose shoulders we all stand and on whose leadership we all, we all depend. With the leadership of women, we can clean up our air and water, and we can create a new generation of economic opportunity, and we can turn the corner on climate change. So please join us. There is a path forward. There is a light in the darkness, and it's the leadership of women that is showing the way. So thank you all for your support and your great work. Together, we can accomplish remarkable things. And I know, I know that we will. Thank you very much.